So I know that I am definitely late to this challenge, but here are five things that I would never do as a spine surgeon. What's up guys, Dr. Webb here. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. And I've seen this challenge kind of go on and on and on. I've seen people from different specialties talk about what they would not do regarding their specialty. And I wanted to jump in and share my thoughts. So five things that I would never do as a spine surgeon. The first thing is smoke. Smoking, although it's bad for other parts of your body, for your lungs, for your kidneys, for your heart, it's also bad for your spine. The disc or the shock absorbers that, that are essentially the cushions between the bone, these things are made up of a lot of water. And in order to nourish those shock absorbers, those discs that are between the bones, um, they need blood flow and they need nutrients. And the way to get nutrients is to have adequate blood flow. Well, nicotine is a vasoconstrictor, so it makes the chance that the blood flow is going to that disc to hydrate it, it makes that more uncommon or less likely to happen because of the constriction. So that's what smoking does. Even in patients who are either before surgery or after surgery, the risk of surgery goes up. Your bone may not heal. That's called a pseudoarthrosis, and that's what nicotine does. You can have hardware failure. You can have an infection. You can have a what's called a seroma. The actual wound, the surgical incision needs to heal or come together after surgery. If you're a smoker, less blood flow is going to that area, more likely to have an infection. Some insurance companies are requiring nicotine tests before surgery to approve the surgery. So nicotine is bad, not just in your spine, but other parts of your body. But what it does, it restricts blood flow. You need blood flow, you need nutrients, and you need certain growth factors factors to go to the areas of the disc to repair and to heal and to stay healthy. So that's one thing I would never do as a spine surgeon is smoke. The second thing that I would never do as a spine surgeon is do sit-ups. Sit-ups are bad for your back. Don't do them. If there's ever a therapist that recommends my patients do sit-ups or a chiropractor, that's the last time I will refer to that particular therapist. Sit-ups essentially destroy the disc. So if you're putting pressure on the disc, you know, you're doing 100 and 200 sit-ups, you know, over a session of, you know, a personal training session or just doing them recreationally, well, that's damaging your disc. Each sit-up that you do is placing 700 to 800 pounds of pressure on that disc. That disc, once it degenerates and desiccates and dries out, that's irreversible. We haven't found a solution or a way to reverse the degeneration, the desiccation that can happen at the disc level, because once you lose that cushion between the bones, then it's just bone on bone, and that's very painful, and that's what brings a lot of patients in to see me. So the second thing I would never do as a spine surgeon is do sit-ups. Instead, do planks or core exercises, stabilizers, and strengthen the muscles around the back. Those are more effective. The third thing I would never do as a spine surgeon is squat or lift heavy weights. I think some weights are fine. I think lightweight, high repetition is better. But essentially, if you're lifting heavy weights, you're damaging the structures in your back, specifically the disc. And this goes back to the common thing. You're damaging the cushion between the bone. Each pound of pressure, essentially, increased weight that you're applying to your back, you're applying forces across that disc, which leads to degeneration. If you haven't seen a documentary about Ronnie Coleman, it's on Netflix, you should definitely check that out. It talks about his addiction to weightlifting and lifting 600, 700, 800 pounds of weights and then damaging his back. He's had multiple knee replacements, hip replacements, spine operations, and the list goes on. And that's all from the heavy lifting that has been done over the years. If if you think about a car that has 20 people in it, can 20 people fit in the car? Probably not, but if you think about that car, the tires on that car are gonna wear down quicker from the increased weight versus someone is just one person in a car. Well, similarly, in the spine, if you have more weight, if you're overweight, or if you're lifting heavy weights, it's gonna wear down the cushions in your back. Once you lose those cushions, that's irreversible. Some people are looking at stem cells and injecting things into the disc to reverse the degeneration process but unfortunately, we haven't figured out a way to slow 
down the degeneration process and the spine. So don't lift heavy weights, light weights, more repetition, doing calisthenics, Pilates, yoga, all those things will keep your back nice and healthy. The fourth thing I would never do as a spine surgeon is ride a motorcycle. I've seen so many injuries over the years with motorcycles and ATVs and four wheelers. These things are dangerous. I've seen patients who've had amputations of their legs. I have a video of a interview I did with a young patient who had bilateral leg amputations. He was a semi-pro football player, riding a motorcycle, had an accident and lost both of his legs. I'll put that video right up here. But riding motorcycles, I would never get on one as a spine surgeon. The risks are too great. You know, I don't play with firecrackers. I need my hands to be able to operate. That's a whole nother story. But motorcycles, dangerous. Stay off of them. If you do ride a motorcycle, <laughs> ride on the ones that are stationary, the ones at the gaming places where you can just sit there and ride the game if you have that need. But I've just seen too many injuries over the years with patients. They have broken bones, dislocated hips, fractures in their back from riding motorcycles. Just not worth it to me. That's the fourth thing I would never do is ride a motorcycle. The fifth thing I would never do as a spine surgeon is a ignore my pain. We talked about the disc, that cushion that's between the bones. It's part of the aging process also that patients will develop some type of arthritis, degenerative changes in their neck and their spine as we age. And if you're having pain, this could be a sign that something serious is going on with your spine. Don't ignore that pain. Although most patients who have some type of acute flare up of their pain, just from the run of the mill day, you know, you're lifting something and you have some pain in your back, well, most of those will resolve over the the course of the next few weeks. Typically, we don't always need to get an MRI right off the bat. There are these so-called red flag signs that indicate when we should consider obtaining a MRI sooner, but most patients who have an acute flare-up of their back pain from some underlying degenerative disorders, it's usually soft tissue, like musculoskeletal, the muscles, they, they tend to spasm or undergo some type of trauma from lifting or twisting episode. So don't ignore your pain. If the pain is persistent over you know, a couple weeks, weeks and you've tried these things, some therapy, some stretching, anti-inflammatories, you're still having pain, go in to see your spine surgeon to make sure it's nothing serious, especially in the cervical spine. You can have a condition called cervical myelopathy, which is a dysfunction of the spinal cord in your neck that can cause clumsiness, that can cause gait abnormalities, that can cause you to lose your balance. And that's from the pressure on your cervical spine and your, your spinal cord. And some of these patients require surgical intervention. This is Dr. Webb. These are the five things that I would never do as a spine surgeon. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.